time and visualize it a little easier. So at t equals to zero, it just simply looks like a sine function. So I'm graphing y as a function of x. This is x, right? So then you have here uh, sine of x. So when zero, when x is zero, the wave is here. Okay. Then you got here pi over two. So the amplitude of the wave is one, right? So it goes all the way to one, and this is 1.57 meters, right? It's uh, <coughs> pi, over, uh, pi over two is 1.57. So this is, should be slightly longer than that, uh, maybe like this, if you want to make it really to scale. <coughs> so somewhere here is pi over two, and that's double that size. And then you get here, uh, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi is 6.28 meters, right? 6.28 meters, uh, and this is 1.57 meters. So the wave goes all the way to a 1. And then, of course, I can keep drawing more, you know, uh, till whenever. Uh, so now, if I want to draw the next uh, progression, so at t equals to pi over 2 seconds, so that means at t is equal to 1.57 seconds, what does this wave look like? See? So um, then it's going to look like sine of x minus pi over 2. So now I can put zero here, what do I get? Sine of zero, I get sine of negative pi over two, which is what? Uh, so it starts out, let's, let's do this in red, right? Because if I put here uh, zero, uh, zero, right, I'm gonna get sine of negative pi over two. So now if I put x is pi over two, I'm gonna get pi over two minus pi over two, that's sine of zero. So then I'm gonna get like this. Then when I put x is pi, I'm going to get sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Oh, no, sorry. This is concave up, right? Then concave down. Right? And now, how about that t equals to um, at t equals to pi seconds, right? Then you're going to have 3.14 seconds. You see? So then, what are you going to have? Then you're going to do um, so this one. So one now, when you put a zero here, you're going to get sine of negative pi, which is what? Zero, right? And then when you put pi over 2 here, you're going to get what? Sine of negative pi over 2, which is negative 1. And then when you put pi, then you're going to get 0 again, right? So now it's going to look like this. So it looks like this, right? Next one is going to be the let's do the green one. So now at uh, t equals to three pi over two would be what? Uh, one point five seven added to this, right? So that's going to be eleven one seven four point seven one seconds, right? 
and then the wave will look like um, put zero here, you get sine of negative three pi over two, which is actually one, right? It's negative three, three pi over two goes all the way to two negative two seven, right? So now it's one. Right, then you put pi over two, you get pi over two minus three pi over two is pi. So that gives you zero. Then you put pi minus three pi over two is negative pi over two, so negative one. So now the wave looks like this. So at first it might look like, okay, what's the big deal? What is the wave doing? This is actually really exciting because you have now just described a traveling wave, a transverse traveling wave. Huge deal. Transverse traveling wave. And it could be the transverse traveling wave either in a spring, in a spring or a string or it could be an electromagnetic wave. And the propagation of this could be the electric field. It's propagating up and down, right? Or it could be magnetic field propagating up and down. So the wave is doing two things, and it's a little bit subtle to realize what are those two things it's doing. A certain element of the wave, like for example, the wave started out here, right? A certain element of the wave, it went down first, See this piece of the wave? Uh, which one was the next one? The blue one, right? Hold on. No, the next one was red, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the wave initially doing? This element of the wave, what is it initially doing? Going up. It's actually going down, right? Because at 1.57 seconds, it ends up here. You see? So it's going down. When it comes here, what happens to its velocity? stops, right? So let's map this into the motion of a block. Initially, where is that element of the wave? It's like the block being at its equilibrium point, right? X equals zero. What is that wave doing? What is that element of the wave doing? It's moving down. So it would be like the block moving to the left, you see? In 1.7 seconds, it reaches the most negative amplitude. So it's like the block reaching the most compressed position. Right? Then after that, it goes back. Right? And the next progression of the wave is uh, 3.14 seconds. So it goes and it comes back in 3.14 seconds. You see? Goes, comes back in 3.14 seconds. Then from then on, it goes up, right? So which means it's like the block going to the right. And then in this one was 4.71 seconds. So then it reaches its most stretched position, right? After which it goes down, back down, and then completes the whole cycle. So how many seconds does it take to complete the cycle, that means? Just based on that for it to go down, up, and then back down to its initial starting point. How many seconds is that? Two five. Yeah, that is actually 6.28 seconds. Because when it's 6.28 seconds, it goes back to what it looked like at the origin, right? So what's the period of that wave, of that element of that wave? period is how many seconds it took for that wave to go up and down, right? What is the period of that wave? 6.28 6 seconds. What is the frequency? 1 over 6.28 seconds, right? So that's uh, cycles per second. What's the omega? 2 pi f. Right? So 2 pi is 6.28. The f is 1 over 6.28. So in other words, just from this, I should be able to conclude what is the omega of the wave. Just from that, those pictures. 
And then that gives me what? One radian per second. Which takes us to the initial problem that told us that the omega is one. <laughs> so we kind of proved there? Yeah. In other words, it proved that the picture we drew was correct and corresponded to this wave. Okay? Okay, how about the energy of the wave? What's the wave doing in its energy? The, tr the, uh, the energy of the wave is traveling to the right. Whereas the, a certain element of the wave is going up and down, you see? So a transverse wave is a really weird thing. It's like me taking a string, yapping it with a pulse, right? What happens when, I, when my hand goes up and down with the spring? The energy of the wave travels this way, whereas the, a certain element of the wave only goes up and down. That's the weird thing with the transverse wave, is that the motion of the wave is this way, the motion of the energy of the wave. But the, a certain element only do, goes up and down, right? The best analogy for me of that is a wave that you do in a sports arena, right? You have a huge sports arena like soccer or, or football, right? What does each person of the wave do? Do you actually start running? No, somebody decides, I'm going to start the wave by going like this up, right? So it's literally like, this is the first person of the arena that starts a wave, right? They raise their hand up. That's like the, you're the element of the wave that is moving up, right? Person next to you has to respond to you a certain time a little bit later. So when your hand is here, they already have to start raising, right? They're a little bit behind you, right? And then the person next to that says, okay, now I need to start. So everybody's a little bit behind. So then you go like this, and then you go back down, and then you go back, you know, you go back all the way to the bottom, right? All right, and then you go like that, and then so on like that. <laughs> but then the energy of the wave travels all around, all around the arena, you see? So you get a, some, some, what is the thing traveling around? That's the thing that's hard to describe. What is that? The enthusiasm of the crowd, the energy of the crowd, the message to say we're excited about our team, right? In terms of physics, what's, what's the thing traveling this way? It's some kind of disturbance of the wave, right? <laughs> so if that, if, if that wave is coming and you're standing here, you're gonna, it's gonna do something to you, right? So that's kind of what's, what's traveling this way. It's gonna interfere with you. If it's an electromagnetic wave, the electric field and the magnetic field are oscillating but the light is coming to my eyes, and then my eyes are gonna start noticing the frequency of that wave, and I'm gonna see a certain color, do you see? So it's kind of the same thing that happens when the wave travels around, and then somebody's just lazily sitting up, eating a hot dog, and says, oh, okay, now I have to stand up, right? It affects you some way. That's exactly what the transverse wave does, you see? So, uh, well, What's the velocity of that wave now? Velocity of wave. This is the velocity of the travel of the energy of the wave, right? So velocity of wave, so more, more correctly to say, how fast is the energy of the wave traveling? Is the wave disturbance Well, how fast is the wave disturbance traveling in the X direction? Now, how will I calculate that? So, let's look at the wave, in the peak of the wave, for example. At t equals to zero, where's the peak of the wave? Here, right? Where's the next progression of the wave? You see the red one? So, the peak of the wave has moved from here all the way to here. See? You can look at any point of the wave, like the origin. You can say, the origin has moved from here to here, which is the same amount, right? The peak of the wave has moved from here. This one has moved to here. Every point of the wave has moved to the right, from the, red, from the black to the red, you see? Uh, and then from this black to this red, from this black to this red. So what's the distance that it has moved? 
distance divided by time. That's going to be the velocity of the energy of the wave. Okay? So what's that going to be? Well, it moved pi over 2 meters to pi meter. So that's pi over 2 meters, right? Divided by what's the time? The time is also uh, pi over 2 seconds, right? So that's going to be the velocity of the wave is going to be 1 meter per second. Right? Well, what else do we know about any waves? The velocity of the wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Any sound wave or tr transverse wave or electromagnetic wave has to also satisfy that. So if we conclude that, that the velocity of the wave is 1 meter per second, we can calculate the wavelength from that. We already know the frequency is what? 1 over 6.28 <coughs> times per second, right? 1 over, we can write this as 2 pi, 2 pi cycles per second. So what's the wavelength of the wave? Two pi. This one goes over here, so 2 pi meters. That should also match with our picture. Is the wavelength of the wave 2 pi meters? <coughs> yeah, exactly. Right? From here to here is 2 pi. So in other words, everything is matching. The velocity of the wave is 1 meter per second is making sense because that one gives you the same wavelength that you see over there. Okay? The other way to express the velocity of the wave that you might not have seen before is to express it as omega over k. This is kind of new, right? Why? Because uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f, right? Omega is 2 pi <coughs> f. What is the k? Did I give you the equation for that? That's the wave number? Yeah. Is 2 pi over lambda. K is 2 pi over lambda. Remember, K was radians per meter. Well, how do we, how do we even validate that equation? Can we validate that? Um, in our case, the K was given as one radian per second, right? I mean, one radian per meter. So, according to this, the lambda is 2 pi. So then, what happens? 2 pi over 2 pi, that's 1 radian per meter. Okay, so that means that we have uh, validated the equation k is 2 pi over lambda. So now if I put that into here, what's going to happen? V is omega over k, 2 pi f, 2 pi over lambda, 2 pi 2 pi cancels lambda f. Oh, okay, so omega over k is the same thing as saying uh, lambda f. It's just different notations. Okay? So you can keep doing this kind of exercise, and I think I've done it in one of, one of my other videos. Uh, I changed the K to 2 radians per meter, kept, kept the omega the same. Then draw four progressions of the wave, then do a similar analysis. Then I went back to K is 1 radian per meter, and omega is 2 radians per second. So change the omega, change the keep the k the same, right? Then keep the k the same, change the omega. Then you do another diagram. So it takes a while. And then change the k and change the omega. Just double both of them, right? And then see what happens to the wave. To really understand what happens. What should happen if I double both? Should the velocity change? Should the frequency change? Should the wavelength change, or should nothing change? Let's just quickly see. Can you do answer without actually graphing it? Well, if we pure, purely go by the formulas, if you double both, the velocity. the velocity should not change. What should happen to the wavelength? If I double this, the wavelength should, should go half. Uh, how about the frequency? So if I double both, the wavelength should be what? Um, what was it now? Two pi meters? 
So it should be just pi meters, right? The wavelength should go down in half. What should the frequency be? If I double the omega, frequency is, uh, well, it should, it's uh, directly proportional. Okay. So if the frequency of this was uh, what? What was the frequency of that? 1 over 6.28, 1 over 2 pi hertz. This one is going to be 1 over pi hertz. So that means the up and down motion of the wave is faster. The frequency doubles. Oh, that makes sense, right? This guy doubles. This guy goes down half. half. Because therefore, the velocity, velocity doesn't change if I double both. So the velocity of the wave stays the same. So it travels across the s with the same energy, uh, with the same velocity, but it's going up and down quicker. You see? It's going up and down quicker. The amplitude, of course, doesn't change because I haven't doubled the amplitude. Um, what else? The period also changes, right? What happens to the period? Half. Then, uh, half of this, which means it's going quicker, right? Yeah, so pi seconds. The next question for us to ask is what happens to the energy of the wave? Because we're, so far we're doing the velocity, right? So the velocity stays, uh, velocity stays the same, so it becomes one meter per second. So let's keep those in mind. Two rads, two rads versus one rad, one rad, okay? So now let's develop an equation for the energy of the wave, similar to what we did with the block and the spring, all right? So in order for us to develop an equation for the energy of the wave, I have to take my original equation, y of x of t, Then I have to take the partial derivative of this with respect to t, keeping x constant. In other words, I, I want to know the velocity of the wave as it's going down as a function of time, as it's going up and down, right? So it would be equivalent for me for finding out the velocity of the block as it's going right to left, right? So v sub y, that's called, is equal to y of x of t partial with respect to t, keeping y constant, uh, keeping x constant. So the notation is like a bar like this. You're keeping the x constant. You're taking the derivative with respect to t. And you're seeing how the wave is going up and down as a function of time. You see? So then that's going to be what? Uh, this omega comes out. Okay, then when you take the second derivative of it, that gives you the acceleration. Partial squared y, partial t squared, keeping x constant. Another negative w comes out, but then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So then you get negative a omega squared sine kx minus omega t plus five. <coughs> so this gives you the Velocity of an element of the wave as it's moving down and up as a function of time, right? So the units of it is meters per second. See? And this gives you the acceleration of a certain element of the wave as it's going up and down, right? <coughs> so now uh, the kinetic energy of the wave is going to be what? Kinetic energy half mv squared. It's kind of like what we did with um, uh, the spring and the block, right? And the potential energy is going to be what? Half with the block, what did we do? Remember we said potential energy is half the spring constant of the spring. Uh, times the x squared, then what did I do? 
half. Remember, x was a squared sine squared omega t plus phi. Then I said, let me find the average value of that, which was uh, one half, right? And then the average value of the potential energy became a quarter. So I want to take a similar step like that, what similar step to that. Or I could do the opposite. I could say the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And then I can take the velocity of the of the block and the spring. The velocity of the block was what? A w cosine, right? So a squared, w squared, cosine squared, omega t plus five. Then take half of that, uh, take the average of that. And the kinetic energy is gonna be quarter m a squared omega squared. But then a, uh, m omega squared is gonna be the same thing as the spring constant of the spring, right? Because uh, omega square root of k over m, so uh, m omega squared is gonna be the k. Now which of these two do I wanna do? I think for the wave, I want to do this guy better. Why? Because I don't know what the I don't know what the k of the the potential energy of this guy is. In other words, I don't know the spring constant of the the wave in the string. I don't know what this guy is. You see, I want to derive an equation for what takes the place of the k. You get my point? With there, usually you're given the spring constant of the spring, and then you can do your integral, right? So I'd rather work off the kinetic energy and then make uh, a similar, um, then go backwards and make so for the k. So then I can say kinetic energy is 1 half m, velocity of the wave is this guy, right? V sub y, then square that. And then what? Then integrate that from zero to period dt over the period, right? Then so what should that give you? Half again, right? So then you're just gonna get this, that's it. So kinetic energy of the wave is gonna be half, the average kinetic energy is gonna be one half m uh, a squared omega squared, and then you're gonna have quarter. Then I'm going to argue that the potential energy of this wave, the average potential energy, should equal to the average kinetic energy. So therefore, what's the spring constant of the wave in the, in the string? It's just going to be m omega squared again. So we can call this k spring constant of wave in string. And that's just going to be m omega squared again. And the units of it should be newtons per meter again. Right? Um, why? I can see why you, you, you plugged in the velocity that we derived from that. From this, yeah. Yes. So, why is the cosine not squared? Oh, sorry, sorry. It should be squared. I was just... Oh, was it? Yeah, I was just being careless. Yeah, you have to square this, square this, square this. And then you're going to argue that this is a half. Uh, then it's going to cancel that. Oh, okay. being a little bit too quick. For the string, we have to take a couple steps in order